Hello everyone and welcome back to my hard time series in Kerbal Space Program 0.25. In this episode I want to test two launchers, uh, fully recoverable launchers, and to see if maybe we can get some better capacity than we do with the OVX. The OVX imported from my 0.24 series which can carry 14 tons to orbit and then return back to the surface and it does that very reliably but I could do with a heavier payload capacity and so I'm attempting to use if you remember the the Derek shuttle had three boosters on it and each of them came back to the surface independently and I've tried to adapt one of those boosters as a launcher and I've got this science lander that I used in my point two four series which has the LVN atomic rocket motor here and has loads and loads of Delta V I hope to eventually send this over to Jewel and particularly to land on either Val or Tylo probably Val I don't think it has a thr thrust to weight ratio of Tylo for Ty Tylo but uh, it certainly has the Delta V uh, so yeah that's the plan or at least what I'm thinking about but uh, yep I'm going to test this out and then I have another launcher a much larger launcher which I hope to also test out to see if maybe it can have a larger launch capacity while still returning to the surface safely. Now the interesting detail about this is I've uh, spread out the landing struts a little bit wider. They, there are eight landing struts. I've action grouped their uh, the suspension lock and also I've put these wing panels in order to smooth out the lines to make it look better so it's got sort of a skirt here and so those are some of the details that uh, represent improvements on the booster that I had previously used. But let's try this out. I should mention that uh, before starting I added the stock bug fix module for launching large vehicles. Uh, apparently large vehicles sometimes cause the pad to explode when they launched and so I've added the DLL file that uh, s solves that problem. So that's one little modification I've done. Uh, it's still a stock game, it's just a bug fix. All right, so yes, let us launch this. It's a costly experiment. The next one is going to be even more expensive, but uh, it'll be worthwhile if we can, well, certainly it'll be worthwhile if we can get some science out of the lander. We are conducting a mission here. It's not just a test, but uh, let's see how it goes. Okay, here we are. Let's throttle up, SAS on. All right, well, just uh, going up and coming back down again. And of course, leaving this in orbit for future missions. So the mass of this right now, uh, 250, I think it was probably around 256. 256 tons. The capacity for this launcher to low carbon orbit is 18 tons if it wants to get back down. Again, of course, single stage to orbit. Probably need to change the staging here. Now, of course, if this works out, maybe we could find a way to attach more boosters to it on the side and carry a heavier load, but it's a little bit tough with the skirt like this. They'll have to be spaced pretty far apart. Okay, here we go for a bit. Uh, keep in mind, this tank is locked in order to provide fuel for the descent. So, we've got that as well. Okay, well that's a pretty good orbit. That will do. And so... Throttle is down. I'm gonna separate the mission. Whoa! Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The mission. This thing has the problem with the fairings. I forgot about that. Okay. Well, it's gonna have an interesting time here. Just gotta get rid of that fairings. Those fairings somehow. It's just very jittery. Come on fairings get loose. Oh, I hope this works out.
Maybe they'll be gone if I switch. Let's see. Oh. That did not seem to work. Okay, one's loose. This is a very weird thing. Okay, they're both loose. Now. This does have a reaction wheel somewhere, right? Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe it only has the torque on the probodobodyne. Yeah, I think it only has that little bit of torque. So it's tough to control it. Okay, but I'll get the solar panels out so it's not going to lose power while waiting in orbit for its transfer to Joule. Try and get it situated properly. We do need more science, by the way. I checked and we don't have the large docking ports. We need the large docking ports. This is just a bundle of Delta V and science, so not much to it. No RCS even. Alright, it looks stable enough for me. Okay, now, getting this thing back down. That is the main test. From a 100 kilometer orbit, I'm expecting around 30 kilometer periapsis will do above the peninsula to the east of the KSC. But there is the fact that this thing has wing parts. I, don't, I wonder if those are going to cause any sort of confusion or complication. Let's see. Okay, well that will look reasonably good. Let's unlock. Oh, looks like we're in the dark. Okay. Not unlock, I have to just transfer fuel. Wanna have the fuel as low as possible. Now the OBX was used to launch that nuclear lander in my other series, the point two four series, so this doesn't seem to have particularly good benefit over the OVX right now. It just barely has it has about the same amount of fuel left over. So that's a little bit disconcerting. I don't think it's a major benefit, and it costs a lot more. Okay, uh, looks like we're going to be hitting the home continent at pretty much a nominal altitude, maybe a tad on the low side. I do not, of course, expect the parachutes to bear the whole mass of this. Uh, we've got 54 tons here. No, no, that's fine. 54 tons, and we've only got 24 parachutes. So we're probably going to have to ignite the engines for a little bit to slow us down on touchdown. Okay, well, we're over the mountains, and I don't think we're going to reach the ocean. So those are two very good things. Doesn't look like the wing panels really made a difference. Okay, since we're short, I'm just waiting as long as possible before deploying parachutes, but I think this is about right, and yep. Okay, gear down. 30 kilometers away from the KSC. I guess not bad for a first try on this one. So yeah, I was going to do station building in this episode, but I figured out that I didn't have the large docking ports. So we have to get the large docking ports before I could possibly do, uh, do station building. Okay, uh, parachutes deployed, 8 meters per second, 8.7, quite fast. So, sorry for going back on what I said at the end of the previous episode, which was I, I was interested in doing station building in this episode, but without docking ports, that's a little bit difficult. Let's make it a nice 4 meters per second. And SAS on. 
And oh no 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 no! Ah. Well, um, lots of pieces. I guess I'll just have to recover whatever I can. Let's see what the breed we have from that. Recover. Recover. Make sure to recover only stuff that's actually on the ground. Don't want to recover our orbiting probe. Okay, so the OV-11 does not seem to be a particularly good thing. It doesn't really carry much more capacity than the OVX, and obviously it had the landing problem. So let me go to my second candidate for a new SSTO recoverable launcher. So we're going to launch another nuclear science lander, and uh, if the other one is going to Val, we'll try Tylo with this one, though it might not be able to work out. We'll at least get into orbit around Tylo. And that will, we have a contract, you see. We've got uh, uh, achieve orbit around Tylo, transmit to recover from space around Tylo, land, and then transmit from the surface. So uh, we've got those contracts, so that's what these science landers are supposed to do with uh, our little uh, LVN engine. But this is the Koyu's rocket. Yes, I've, I've gone back to a familiar design. And, but in this case, uh, going with these cantered uh, outward-leaning boosters, and they're not really boosters, they're not meant to separate, it's all coming down as a single craft, as an SSTO, but uh, the benefit of having them like this is that I can have a very wide base for the struts, and so that's my goal here. The fuel feeds both ways, but I've got it action grouped so that I can turn uh, the engines on and off, so the center engine is on 9 and the outer engines, the main sails, are on 10. Uh, the main sails are especially important in the beginning when the the KR2L doesn't have very good efficiency at sea level. But eventually, we want to turn off the main sails as uh, we get into vacuum because it's much better. The KR2L is much better in vacuum. All right, so that's the plan. I don't know if I have enough parachutes. There's sure a lot of them. And uh, I actually don't know just yet, I haven't made the calculation of how much this thing could actually launch. But uh, definitely it should be able to launch the Science Lander, that's... I mean, obviously we've launched a much smaller rocket with this on top and it worked. At least we were able to bring it back. So, yep, that is the situation and a lot of things can go wrong. Certainly this is the rocket that I was interested in getting that bug fix for. Uh, lighting this one on the launch pad could probably cause destruction. It might still cause destruction. I don't know if the bug fix actually works. Let's find out. Let's go to the launch pad. Okay, so here we are on the launch pad. It's sure taking up a lot of space and our mass is 652 tons. Alright, SAS on, throttle up. Let's see what happens. Okay, oh, oh. The launch pad still exploded. Ah, oh, darn. We're gonna have to fix that, I think. Yeah, that's gonna cost some money. So, even with the little, uh, dill, the little bug fix module, that isn't fixed. I guess maybe we won't be able to use the Koyus after all, but out of curiosity, uh, let's see if uh, it would be recoverable. Got overheating on the main sails because I connected them directly to the orange tanks, but I don't think that's gonna reach critical levels. Silly launch pad. I wonder how much it's gonna cost to fix that. Hope not too much. We've got plenty of funds, of course, but uh, all this testing is uh, biting into our budget, too. Okay, starting a turn. Let's see. Oh, this thing could be very unstable. All these boosters and stuff. Okay, try and keep it smooth. 
So I guess the whole launch pad, pad blowing up on uh, on big launches is solved in point nine zero. Okay, let's see what happens if I turn off the outer engines. Yeah, it's still not there yet. Okay, now? Okay, now it's good. And this thing's ISP is way above what the main sales can produce. They they top out at 360. This one's got 380. Okay, 112 by 117. All right. Certainly a lot more fuel left over. Let's see how this all goes. Engines off and separate. Ooh. This probably is going to have the little jittery things again. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe it's in a steady state. Those little fairings aren't going to jitter out. Huh. Oh, well, I guess not. It's just got those things there. What's the mass of this thing? 14.66 tons. Okay. Well, anyway, it's off. Let's get the solar panels for it out. Okay. Now this thing. Right. This is going to be fun. All right. We are on our descent path. Could this be the biggest thing I've tried to bring back down again? I don't know. So I've done a lot of KSPing. I don't remember anything larger. Looks like we might be a little bit high. Whew, maybe we're going a little bit too far here. Actually, now that we're in the atmosphere, I should switch engines. Ooh. Being tossed about a bit. Okay. I'm going to force this a little bit. A lot. Ah, oh, darn. Going too far, going too far. Uh, I need to reserve some fuel for touching down softly. Uh, but we're going to be in the water. That's never a good thing. Okay, full parachute deployment. This one brings it down to 7.4, though that's with uh, a lot less fuel than I probably would normally expect to be bringing down with me. I'll have to get pretty close to the surface before I light the engines to slow down. Uh, recover vessel. Ah, no, too late. Ooh. I almost managed it. On the bright side, it, it actually looks comparatively stable. Uh, if it was landing on land, maybe it would have worked, but it did destroy the launch pad, so that's the downside. Okay, uh, space uh, tracking station. Let's pick up the pieces. Okay, lots of pieces to pick up. 
cover. Some of the pieces splashed down, others of the pieces landed at Kerbin. Interesting. Okay, I think I've got all the pieces. So we've got two missions orbiting Kerbin, that's good. Okay, let's see how much rebuilding launch pad's gonna cost me. 128,000. Okay, well, good as new, but that was a costly endeavor. Uh, but we did get the two science landers up with lots and lots of Delta V to them. And that's important because, as you can see, uh, we have to unlock this first. And we've got 336 science, so I'm gonna unlock this. And here we have the Clampatron docking port senior which is what we need also I could use that Rockamax Hubmax multi-point connector so yeah gotta unlock this technology before building stations and so that's hopefully what the science landers are gonna do so that part of the mission is successful in terms of getting those up maybe the contracts will get us enough credits to make up for the losses let's see um, no <laughs> not really well I mean if we complete Val, yeah. Yeah, I think if we complete Val, com uh, all this credit, yeah, it would. And if we at least get him to orbit around Tylo and uh, send back some data, that would be good. Alright, so yes, those are good things. Hopefully we can do them. Yeah. Alright, uh, I'm worried right now. Hold on a sec. I want to make sure I put an antenna on the... Because I just imported the Science Lander from the 0.24 series. I hope I got an antenna on it. It's a little bit tricky because I expected to bring the Science Landers back. Let's see, please have an antenna. Yes, they have an antenna. Okay, so that's good. Alright, so they'll be... Uh, they're, they're all ready to go. So... Launch vehicle testing was a bust and very costly. Uh, we ended up destroying the launch pad and all sorts of havoc. But we've got missions underway that will fulfill the purpose that I wanted, which was to get more science so that we can lock docking ports and build stations. All right. So with that, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.